Oh, sorry. Didn't see you there. Just sitting here playing some Fallout. Fallout New Vegas, actually, to be precise. One of the best games on the planet. It's no Fallout 3, though. But, I thought, well, Aaron made a video about his favorite games, Mega Man. Why don't I make a video about my favorite game, Fallout? What better than that, hmm? Nothing. That's right. So why don't we take a gander at some Fallout stuff? As you can tell, I have a slight problem when it comes to Fallout. This? Oh, that's nothing. There's also this. And this. And this. And this. And this. And this. There's even this Fallout sweatshirt. <laughs> That's not even the worst of it though. I got Fallout shoes, a Fallout watch, Fallout shirts, Fallout sweatshirts, Fallout backpacks. I'd even have Fallout underwear if they had it for God's sakes. It's a problem. I mean hell, look at the background of my computer. And I used to have a Fallout phone case, which you can see over here. There's my Fallout phone case. It's a problem. Seriously, I have Fallout 3 on Xbox 360 and New Vegas on 360. I also have both of those games on PC. I have Fallout 4 on Xbox One. I also have that on PC. And I have Fallout 1 and 2 and Tactics on PC as well. It's a problem. Who can blame me for Fallout being one of my favorite franchises of all time? I mean, just look at this first trailer for when the game was first announced back in 2008 when the game was released in the fall. The the whole thing just speaks to me. I remember seeing this for the first time, I think on X-Play on the old G4 channel. I don't remember if that's exactly where I saw it, but I remember that they were the first people I saw actually talk about the game. And the whole thing just grabbed my attention right from the beginning. The old music, the weird kind of post-apocalyptic worn out world this was the first I'd ever seen a fallout of the entire series really and I had no idea what I was getting into I just saw the first trailer for Fallout 3 and I was instantly hooked the first game of Fallout that I played was Fallout 3 and then I played New Vegas working on the 1 and 2 right now and I've obviously played 4 but 3 was my main game for a long time. And that's still my favorite game of all time to this day is Fallout 3. I've played it 7 times. I have well over a thousand hours into it, which is very sad. Uh, I even have two copies of it on Xbox and one on PC, like I said. All the DLC for that game was awesome. Mothership Zeta. Everything was amazing with that game and still to this day it's my favorite game of all time and I honestly find it hard that any game anytime soon will be able to beat 
how much I like Fallout 3 and I'm pretty sure that this is just going to stay my favorite game forever. Then came Fallout New Vegas, just two years after Fallout 3 came out. Honestly, and I know I'm going to get a lot of crap for this probably, I was not a big fan of New Vegas. The game is good, yes, don't get me wrong, it's a great game, but compared to Fallout 3 that had just come out two years before New Vegas did, it just was a disappointment in my eyes. I like the game, I've played it, I haven't beaten it yet because I honestly get bored before I get around to beating the game. The world is not as exciting as Fallout 3, the story isn't as exciting. You're not even from a vault in this one. You're a mailman, essentially. But I do like the game. The beginning of the game, I think, is awesome. Getting shot in the face and left for dead. The characters, like the character about to come up here, the NCR Ranger, they are honestly one of my favorite characters in all of gaming. I'm even working on a NCR Ranger costume right now for a uh, convention later this year because the character is so cool. I just, the world just did not speak to me as much as Fallout 3 did. It's got the gambling and Vegas and everything and all the hookers and all the exciting stuff, but roaming around in the desert was not very entertaining compared to walking around in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I didn't like it. I liked it, but I didn't like it. That's how I feel about it. That then brings us to the latest installment in the Fallout franchise. Fallout 4. Oh, Fallout 4. Just watching this trailer, which is the official announcement trailer, for the first time, honestly, it sent chills down my spine. This thing has over 4 million views. I would not be surprised if a quarter of those are from me because I watched this trailer so many times I watched so many trailer breakdown things for it I was so excited for this game last year and I was not disappointed the game's great I've only beat it once so far I'm working on survival mode right now on both Xbox and on PC and it's a blast the two DLCs that have been released so far uh, Automatron or whatever it's called and Far Harbor both have been great the stories have been great Far Harbor's uh, map area is amazing one of my favorite areas in all the Fallout games so far uh, the armor and everything that comes with it is great uh, Fallout 4 though the story was not as good to me as Fallout 3's but I think that the world, Boston, and every all the areas around it, I think are better than Fallout 3's. I like the, the city feel of uh, Boston and seeing all the cool landmarks. Yes, there's cool landmarks in Washington in Fallout 3, but the diversity of Fallout 4 and the glowing sea area and all that stuff, I think are a little bit cooler than Fallout uh, 3. But the story is not as good, and everything else just isn't really as good, in my opinion. I think Fallout 3 is still better. But Fallout 4 is a great game. The graphics are great. Modding on the consoles, that's awesome. And I love that. Uh, the one thing that did disappoint me, though, was the uh, the beginning. They advertise it as, oh, you get to play around before the bombs fall. But it's like... 10 minutes of gameplay before the bombs fall and that's it the rest of the game's great and I love it but I was a little disappointed not getting able to play a little bit more of a day in the life of somebody before the bombs fell like I said in the beginning the addition of mods to Fallout 4 on consoles especially is a great new feature and it allows console players to feel what PC users have been feeling for God knows how long being able to mod games. It's fairly simple. At the beginning menu, there's just a thing that says mods there. You click that, and 
in order to do this, you have to have a Bethesda Net uh, account, and it takes you in, and there's all the mods. It shows you what you have in your library, what needs updating. There's also things like mods of the day and all that kind of stuff. It's real nice, most favorited, highest rated. It just makes it really simple and easy for you to download mods. And you can even download mods uh, from the Nexus as well, rather than mods.bethesda.net. But this, I feel like this is just a lot easier. You don't have to do an extra program. <laughs> and there's even build your own vault, which is going to be pointless in a month uh, when Bethesda comes out with their own. But it has a lot new uh, content to the game which is already packed full of content as it is and it all works really well on consoles there's a limit to how many downloads you can take I think it's like two gigs or something like that it's even less on PlayStation but on computer you can do as much as you want and it's it works it's fast it's simple lets you know when stuff needs to be updated there's little summaries you can favorite stuff download stuff rate stuff report it if for some reason it's stolen or inappropriate or stuff like that it's nice it works it's fast it's simple it's easy and then you, to update you just click update downloads it in two seconds and you're good to go the first mod we're going to take a look at today is called campsite for xbox simple wasteland camping also all the mods i'm showing you today will be available on xbox and on PC. So what you do for this one is you go to a chemistry station and you go to camping supplies and as I'm showing you here these are all different things you can build. Cloth wall, cooking pot, dog bed, fire kit, folding chair, GPS beacon, lantern, makeshift tent, pull tent, pull tent, two beds, and sleeping bag. This mod is great for survival mode because it will allow you to essentially sleep wherever you are since on survival mode you can only uh, save when the game sleeps uh, this really comes in handy here I'm going out into the woods because only the little girls camp in the backyard men camp out in the middle of the woods so you find the spot you want to camp you drop everything from your inventory uh, and that's how you set things up first I thought you dropped the cooking pot in order to set it up but you don't you have to go to the uh, campfire and place it there. Once it's all set up, it's essentially a movable base that you can take with you anywhere. You can do any kind of cooking over the campfire with a cooking pot. Any food that you get while roaming around the wasteland. You can also sleep in the tent, but only for a maximum of five hours since it is considered a dirty mattress whatever people have been doing on that mattress I do not want to know so you can only sleep five hours at a time but obviously you can sleep as many times in a row as you want then when you're done uh, you just pick everything up and you can take it all with you except for the campfire which makes sense but you can also use the campfire just to relax around sit down like I'm doing here just sit have a nice uh, nice chat, fireside chat, like with the president. But once you're done, you just pick everything up. Uh, it all goes back in your inventory. You can also give this to dog meat or any of your companions to carry around, but it doesn't really weigh all that much at all. And one important thing to note is that when you pick up the dog bed from under dog meat, he considers that staying, so he will not move. You need to tell him to move with you when you are done as well. This next mod is called Resurrection Forest Edition by Resurrection on uh, this is all from mods.bethesda.net. You can also get this for Xbox, uh, but it's called Spring in the Commonwealth. Obviously, this gives a whole new feel to Fallout 4 making it look almost like The Last of Us, which that's a whole other thing I'll talk about later. I didn't like the game. Whatever. Uh, as you can see here, it just gives the whole world a whole new feel to it. There's grass everywhere. There's leaves on the trees. There's a big forest that adds into the game like this. 
the lighting with this mod combined with the lighting that Fallout already comes with, it just, it's amazing. I mean, it's honestly, like I said, it's like a whole nother game that you're playing here. Here's the red rocket. You can see what this place looks like at night. But obviously, with any mod, there are always problems. As you can see here, the grass at the red rocket grows up through the floor. Not a big deal, but it's something. I'll just show you a couple more clips of what this game looks like. Also, keep in mind that this is a pretty intense uh, mod. I'm running a 980 graphics card in my computer right now, and it's going a little bit slow. So just keep that in mind. Up next is everyone's best friend, Dog Meat. This is also available on both Xbox and PC, and it is by Fetisil. If I'm saying that wrong, sorry. This mod is exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to have dog meat and another companion at any other time. There's a lot of proof um, that people have found that this is how the game was actually meant to be played. Dog meat can't carry as much as other companions. Companions talk about dog meat when he's with you and uh, just stuff like that. He's not very strong either. All these things point to that's how it's supposed to be played. Up next on our top mods of Fallout 4 is something that I might get a hate for or might get love for. Who knows? It's Cheat Menu by Nexus AU. Essentially, this is console commands but without having to go into the console commands. It's got all the stuff like here, items, you can give yourself a set amount of caps. Uh, got all the main chemicals. If I don't click caps twice. All the main chemicals, stim packs, right away jet, all the good stuff. Basic food, beverages, all the quest items. The stuff that the Brotherhood of Steel asks for pretty much. The paint, pre-war money, bobby pins. You can give yourself a bunch of bobby pins right off the bat. Technical documents, reactor coolant, uh, blood samples, diamond city paint. All the stuff that people ask for that give you money for it, you could just give yourself it right away without having to run all the way across the freaking country to get it. They got all the crafting materials, a lot easier than doing each thing one by one. All the different types of ammunition for every single kind of gun, uh, flame or fuel, everything. Even the alien blaster rounds, which is nice so you don't have to uh, pretty much hoard it because you feel like you're gonna run out of ammo so you just never use it mini nukes, missiles, everything you could ask for they got all the weapons in here all the basic weapons I should say you have to upgrade them all yourself and there's no legendaries included right now but there's mods to add legendary stuff to each gun anyway so you could start off with the Gauss rifle right off the bat mod it up at the weapons bench and bam right off the bat from the start of the game you got a Gauss rifle you can also give yourself companions like a legendary albino deathclaw or an epic behemoth it's nice but it does take up the space of another companion so if you have for example Kate with you if you spawn that Kate will go away they're just like any other companion but they can't carry anything and they're scary as all hell to look at they will fight for you, follow follow you, and stay. That's about all I can do though. You can't talk to them. Obviously you can't romance them, you sick freaks. They fight for you. Like here, this is uh, he should fight for me here in a second. But at the same time, he is large. And because of that, he's not able to get in too tight spaces. Which you'll see coming up in a second. But it's okay, because he still does a crap ton of damage. He'll kill the thing in one hit. Boom! One important thing to note about him, however, is if you get another companion, like if I go and get Kate back, the Death Claw is just gonna go back to Sanctuary and he's just gonna hang out there. He's just gonna be walking around looking completely out of place. So if you wanna get rid of him, the only way to do that is to kill him. 
So you'll have to fight a legendary albino deathclaw, or you'll have to fight a legendary behemoth, which can be kind of tough, but I have faith in you. So, and as you can see there, he's stuck. So he's better for out and about random encounters rather than close combat in the city type fighting. Up next is full dialogue interface. It's exactly what it sounds like and honestly it's how the game should have been from the beginning. That dialogue wheel was a disaster right out of the gate. Nobody liked it, even Bethesda. Up next is Dog Meets Backpack by HiGeoC. Sorry. Uh, once again, Xbox and PC. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a backpack that you can build at any uh, chemical station or whatever it's called, science station, whatever. Uh, and it allows you to build backpacks for both you and for dog meat. It also allows you to build uh, special collars like a barrel collar, a bell collar, ball cap collar, and lunchbox uh, collar. And dog meat's backpack also comes with 50 pounds, 100 pounds, or 150 pounds. So depending on how much you want him to be able to carry, in addition to what he already can carry, you can pick between those. They also have different faction kinds. This is the Nuka Cola one. You do that at an armor station. It allows you to switch between any kind. There's stuff like the Railroad, the Institute, Brotherhood of Steel, and the Minutemen. And I gave Dogmeat a Vault Tech one. So as you can see here, it's Vault Tech 150. It's real nice to allow dog meat to be able to carry this much in addition to what he already can. Uh, it really helps out if you're planning on just being with dog meat rather than having an extra companion, which can sometimes be a pain in the butt, or if you're going for the whole lone wanderer perk. Uh, since dog meat doesn't disable it, like I said, that's how the game should have been. You should have been allowed to have dog meat the whole time. But that's beyond the point and it looks real nice and it looks almost like they should be in there anyway. I hope you all liked hearing about the different mods and why I like Fallout so much. See you guys next time. Peace!